So this was a custom piece that came to the shop. So it's going to be a how to video of doing a simple relief carving letters. I consider to be one of the easiest things to do. So it's a great project for learning. You can see I put um, a, a stamp, a time stamp on the bottom for people that are not interested in the full process. The carving and the tools I use start around the five minute mark. But for people that have no idea how to do anything like this, um, I, I show the whole process. So basically what I'm starting with are some one by six cedar boards. This is going outside. So I wanted to use an exterior grade lumber and cedar from Home Depot is actually a, a lumber I, I enjoy working with. I like the way it smells. So when you're carving, that is kind of important because you're gonna be smelling it a lot. And these boards are already very straight. If you pick through the whole stack, you can see I found only a couple boards with a few knots, so it'll be easy to carve. And it is a soft wood, so the process is a little bit, it can be trickier in certain aspects, but um, it's going to be a little bit easier for power carving, which is what this is. I don't use any chisels in this project. Um, that's mainly because since this is a business, I had to get this done quite quickly. Power carving is, is much faster. So all I did, as you could see, was I cut down my boards and making three signs. So I just um, rough cut the dimensions, adding about an inch to either side to account for any inconsistencies in the glue up. And then all of these boards, just like two by fours, are gonna have a rounded over edge. So I'm just gonna take that edge off. I sent it to the table saw on one side, removed about an eighth of an inch of material, flipped it over, and removed another eighth, so just, just to square up my edges. The nice thing about this lumber, like I keep saying, is it's really flat, so I don't have to joint it or anything before I put it together. It's actually a decent quality grade of lumber, uh, especially considering it came from a box store. And it's already finished, no planing or anything like that. So since this is going outside, I decided to not only glue up this panel, but to add some splines just for extra insurance in between each panel. For something that was going inside, I probably wouldn't worry about this but um, it will just add some more glue surface and make the whole thing a little stronger. If one of the butt joints fails, you'll have that spline still holding things in place. So all I did, like I said, these boards are about an inch thick. So a little bit off center of a half inch, I've made two grooves. I could flip it around. That's how you get the two grooves. I used a chisel to remove the inner excess, and then I'm left with about a quarter inch groove. I cut those quarter inch blinds out of mahogany, which is also an exterior grade lumber, and I could glue the whole thing together. One thing you can't really see is with doing these, you want to flip the grain orientation. It will help with cupping and bowing down the line. So um, a, an easy way to describe that is the grain will look either like a smiley face or a frown. You want to put smiley faces next to frowns the whole way down the line. Just helps if you put them all in the same orientation. That's where you'll get a real severe cup um, in your boards. Like I said, this is three signs, so I glued, to get, I glued them all together at once, but it's three separate pieces. Obviously, two of those signs are smaller than the top ones. For gluing up panels, you want to have clamps on the top and the bottom that also helps with cupping. So I let this set up overnight and I just roughly removed some of the glue with a scraper. That was mostly so I could transfer my pattern. And then I cut this down to size on the radial arm saw. You could see how nicely those splines um, fit in those grooves. This panel's, like I said, the cedar is a nice grade of lumber, so it came pretty flat. Like I said, the whole thing was oversized, so I just trimmed it down. And then I had my rough rectangle. Now the easiest way I have found to transfer this pattern, this is actually the hardest part, especially when doing lettering. If this isn't centered and perfect, um, you'll, you'll spot it extremely quickly, especially with lettering because we're so used to seeing a set spacing for letters. If it's off, um, your eye picks it up. So I have an overhead projector and you can see I just blew up my um, sign so it was the same size as my board. This will also have an outer border which I'll, I'll add later. I could measure how tall the letters were and then I could draw a center line on my board and I could go out the same distance each way. These letters were three inches. So I have a center line, an inch and a half up, an inch and a half down, and then I could line up my, uh, in this circumstance, the closed letters in between those two lines and then I can trace it. 
Now I've done this with a vinyl cutter that works really well. The overhead projector is by far the easiest way to do it because these are two sided signs. I could flip it around and do the exact same thing. Um, I realize most people aren't going to have an overhead projector. I, I actually got this for free. Um, if you know someone that works in an office, a lot of times they upgrade things like this and they get rid of old equipment. That's how I got it. If you do not have an overhead projector the way I used to do this and on larger signs you have to go to some place like FedEx Kinko's, you just get your sign printed the size you need and then I would word burn transfer it onto the wood. It's a longer process but it still works. I do have some chisels out because um, sometimes I clean up some stuff with some chisels but I didn't use them at all for this. The tools I'm using are a Fordham. This is essentially a fancy Dremel. I also got this from someone who was getting rid of some of their father's tools. I have a die grinder which holds bigger size bits and um, these are all the bits I have. Now this is a 10 years worth of collection. A lot of this stuff, these die grinder bits are my preferred method for using with wood. These bigger ones are a little more expensive. You can get the smaller kits. I'm using multiple tools because I have them. When I first started out, I used a Dremel with the smaller eighth inch shaft bits and I made many, many, many signs. I have all these tools, so that's what I'm using, but you do not necessarily need the bigger collets for the bigger Dremel tools. Um, you can easily, like I said, go buy a Dremel, a very inexpensive set of bits, the smaller bits I think you get for like $20 on Amazon, and carve plenty of signs. So don't let my, I have somewhat of an extensive set of tools for this process compared to other things in my shop. Like I said, you do not need all of this. In fact, one of the only reasons I'm using the die grinder with the Dremel is because um, then I don't have to change out the collets. I could use the bigger bits in the the die grinder and the smaller bits in the Dremel. And all I'm going to do is I have this cylindrical bit in there and I'm just cutting away the edges. So I'm keeping the bit at a very minor angle. You can see I'm creating a flange on the outside of the letter but a straight line going down the letter. So this is going to be a low relief carving. So I'm removing about an eighth of an inch of material across the whole sign which will make the letters pop. I'm actually making another sign where the letters are going to be recessed. So if you're interested in that in a couple weeks I'll be posting that. Um, but with this one, the letters, I'm not touching them at all. I'm removing the material around it. The hardest part for uh, beginners is going to be the grain orientation in the wood. The softer wood and the harder grain, the, the um, tools will want to dig into it a little bit more and you'll get waves. So a lot of this, which I, you can't really show in a video, is the pressure I'm applying to the tools. Um, if you're, you're nervous about messing something up, I recommend go getting a 2x4 and, and practice on that. If you can um, do patterns on a 2x4, you can do patterns on just about everything. So after I traced those letters, I just went through and removed the bulk of the material with this circular bit. I used a bigger one for around the letters and a smaller one for within the letters. Um, this was a, a request of the customer. They wanted this kind of divoted pattern in the background. So this is really easy to do uh, with power carving. You can get an, an ideal of how much longer this would take with chisels. I actually prefer chisel work over power carving, but like I said, as a business, time is really important. And I made pretty much the bulk of these signs in about a day and a half and those weren't really full days. So after I have um, the roughing part done, at this point I consider all of this roughing. I have this pointed bit that kind of reminds me of a pencil and that's when I can go through and really define these shapes. The issue I have with stuff like this is because the divoted pattern outside the letters is quite big and the letters are close together, it, it, the hardest process is kind of blending the shorter um, marks made with the smaller tools with the larger head of that, that circular ball. So on these smaller letters, you can see I'm starting right off with, I'm, this is a Fordham um, grinder, but I'm just going to call it a Dremel for the ease of this video. I'm starting off with this smaller bit. This is a dovetail bit. If I was buying one, uh, one bit, this is the one I would get. It's extremely versatile. The shape of it gives you that, that patterning I'm creating pretty easily. 
and the, the die grinder bits are too big for those smaller letterings. Smaller lettering um, is one of the things I, I, it's a little bit of a pain because it is so small to be quite honest. The larger letters are much easier to re recreate. And then for the open and close signs, it's the exact same process. I did a little bit closer up so you could see what I'm talking about. With the angle I'm holding these, these bits, you could see it creates a straight line around the letters, which will make them pop. And it's removing about a 45 degree angle away from the letter. It's essentially um, an extended stop cut. So if you go through and use your other bits, it won't flake off parts of the material because you're removing the material away from the letter and, and making the letter pop. And then you can get in between these, these spaces and remove the rest. So that's basically all I'm doing. It's a very simple process. It's the exact same thing for all the letters. You can't really tell um, from the, the overhead projector, but you, you can see I kind of drew these lines squiggly. That's because it's a rustic text. Um, the lines weren't perfectly straight. So the other nice thing about this was because it wasn't per a perfectly straight font, if you're not super steady with your hands yet, it, that does save um, a little bit of time. So then, like I said, um, the customer wanted a border around this. I don't do the borders in the, in the pattern because getting a straight line around the whole thing is going to be a little bit more difficult. And also because you're mixing um, end grain with edge grain on the edges, if you have um, a border that sticks out, it's going to create a point that could potentially fail. So what I do is I cut, I had some leftover cedar. This sign's still about an inch thick because even though I removed material, I didn't remove a ton of it. And I'm just putting an inch groove down the center of this, and then that panel is going to float within this frame. The way I joined the corners was I just cut away. I essentially created a tenon on the corners that fit inside that groove. And you could see on this edges, this is really important. My frame is not flush with my panel. This panel, especially being outside, is going to expand and contract with the seasons. So you ha I gave myself a little bit of breather room to allow for that. In order to create the tenons, I have a simple stop set up on the radial arm saw. You can see I can remove that material. And then this will fit into the sign, and that's how the whole thing will attach. Now they are painting this. I'm not painting the sign, but if I'm doing something like this for outside, I actually prefer when people are putting a, a sturdy finish on it. Paint will help protect this for, for quite a long time. So with stain um, or any sort of exterior finish, I just let people know they really have to keep an eye on it because if water starts getting inside the sign, getting inside the joints, that's where you're going to have issues. So this is just showing how I finished up the one side. And that is basically what that looks like. There's really not much to power carving letters other than what I saw. You saw I traced the letter. I made a rough tracing of it. I came back in with the circular tool and created the background and removed the material in between the letters. And then I just came in with a fine detailing tool and, and cleaned everything up. Um, it, it's pretty simple process. Like I said, if you're a little nervous, you could practice on a two by four. And then, like I said in the beginning, one of the problems is, is I now have a, a little bit of a roughness going in between these letters because the bigger bit couldn't fit. So in the die grinder, I put a more rounded over bit in there and I just smoothed out material in between those letters so it didn't look as choppy. And that is basically what this looks like. Like I said, pretty simple process. And if you're interested in these sorts of videos, I had two signs come, come down at the, the order list at the same time and the second sign will be um, creating indented letters.